asked me to take a look at the physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, who, during World War II, was on the team that invented the atomic bomb for the Manhattan Project. The bomb was tested in White Sands, New Mexico in 1945. Oppenheimer then started having regrets about what he'd done and how science was being used for destructive ends and started lobbying against the hydrogen bomb and so on and uh, fell out of favor actually with the military and the government for that. Turns out he died in 1967 at the age of 62 of throat cancer. He was a very, very heavy smoker. But when I looked at that photograph, pictures came for his transition. And I wasn't going to do these, but I thought, well, I'll just follow them through and see what happens, because this was a tormented man towards the end. He had regrets about his invention and the contributions he'd made to science. When I went into the energy, there was a set of clear plastic flaps, like you get in a walk-in freezer in a butcher shop where they're trying to keep the cold in. And he was lifting one of the flaps up and walking through. I assume this is the start of the really serious part of his decline, of his illness. Because on the other side, there was a set of steps down. He went down there. And this led to a door. He went through the door into the kind of featureless space that I have never seen before. There was no up. There was no down. There was nothing to identify his position where the walls were, or which way he should go. There was no floor, there was nothing to give him traction. And when I looked it up, I found out that he'd gone into a coma before he died. He was conscious, he was aware that he was moving, but he was also sinking slowly, even though he had no way to calibrate time or space. And ahead of him, and below him, was another doorway. This must represent the end of the coma. I think it lasted about seven days, and then he died. He never recovered. Because in the pictures, he stepped through the door, and this took him into the symbolic tunnel that I always see. But there wasn't any kind of meet-and-greet cave, that kind of metaphorical meet-and-greet cave I usually see. He was straight into the tunnel, and it was a really steep climb. Almost as if the universe didn't want him to get to the top. Maybe this was a chance for him, while still on the mortal side, because he's still conscious, even though he's dead, on the mortal side, to review his life. Not necessarily any ego problems, but to review his life and see it in perspective. This climb gave him time to do that. And when he got to the top... He, symbolically, sat there before going into the light and contemplated the journey he had been on. Because clearly he was conflicted. Clearly he did have regrets about his participation in the invention of the atomic bomb. And he sat there for quite a while, judging, seemingly, his own actions during his lifetime. But what really amazed me was that the dome, the metaphorical light that I always see, extended outwards. It's almost like Grace stepped out to greet him, which I found puzzling because this guy was quite troubled in some ways by what he'd done in his life. But I think what happens is that if you have honored your soul's remit, even if that remit involves creating something horrendous like the atomic bomb, remember, it was used to destroy Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. If you have completed your remit, then it's not your job to start questioning why you were put on the Earth. In the grand tableau of the universal plan, it may have been very, very important that Oppenheimer invented the atomic bomb. Because it would remind the human race of the value of life, maybe. Or teach it a few lessons about how not to misuse power. Or something. It's not for us to question that. But the fact that he had honoured his remit, done his bit, meant that the universe reached out 
and he was embraced by the divine and welcomed home.